Hi folks, this is Jake. Hope you're okay today. We're looking at uh, Richard Borkham, Jesus and the Eyewitness Gospels as testimony. Richard Borkham, 2006, Erdman. And um, Borkham writes, uh, Bochum writes a, a bit about Papias, um, and we'll just get a bit of information about Papias. These are translated by uh, Lightfoot and uh, preserved in Irenaeus against all heresies. The blessings thus foretold belongs undoubtedly. This is preserved in Irenaeus against all against heresies, five three three to three four. Uh, it says fragment one uh, translated by J.B. Lightfoot edited by Reverend Daniel Jennings um, the blessings thus foretold belongs undoubtedly to the times of the kingdom when the righteous shall rise from the dead and reign when to creation renewing freed from bondage shall produce a wealth uh, of food of all kinds uh, from the dew of heaven and from fatness of the earth of the elders who saw John the disciple of the Lord relate that they had heard from him how the Lord used to teach concerning those times and to say the days will come in which vine shall grow each having ten thousand shoots on each shoot branches on each branch again ten thousand twigs and each twig ten thousand clusters and clusters ten thousand grapes and each grape when pressed shall yield five and twenty measures of wine and when any of the saints shall have taken hold of one of their clusters, another shall cry, I am a better cluster, and take me. Bless the Lord through me. Likewise also a grain of wheat shall produce ten thousand heads, and every head shall have ten thousand grains, and every grain ten thousand and fine flour, and bright and clean, and the other fruits, seeds, and the grass shall produce a similar portions. And all the animals, animals, using these fruits which are products of the soil shall become in their turn peaceable and harmonious obedient to man in all subjection these things papias who was a hero of john the companion of polycarp and an ancient worthy witness in writing in the fourth of his books of there are five books composed by him and he added saying but these things are credible to them that believe and when judas the traitor did not believe and asked how shall such gross be accomplished by the Lord? He relates that the Lord said they shall see who shall come to these times. Fragment 2, preserved by Eusebius in um, Preserved in Eusebius of Caesarea's Church History. Five books of Papias are extant, which bear the title Exposition of Oracles of the Lord. Of these, Irenaeus also makes mention as the only works written by him. The following words, These things Papias, he was a hearer of John and companion of Polycarp, an ancient worthy witness in writing in the fourth of his books, for there are five books composed by him so far, Irenaeus. Yet Papias himself, the preface to his discourses certainly does not declare that he himself was a hearer and an eyewitness of the holy apostles but he shows by the language which he uses that he received the matters of faith, of the faith from those who were their friends but i will not scruple also to give a place quote 
for along with my interpretation to everything that I learnt carefully and remembered carefully in the past time from the elders guaranteeing its truth. For like the many I did not take pleasure in those who have so very much to say, but in those who teach the truth, nor in those who relate foreign commandments, but in those who record such as were given from the law to the faith and are derived from the truth itself. And again on any occasion, when a person came in my way, who had been a follower of the elders, I would inquire about the discourse of the elders, what was said by Andrew or Peter or Philip or by Thomas or James or John or Matthew or any other of the Lord's disciples, and what Aristion and the elder John, the disciples of the Lord, say. For I did not think that I could get so much profit from the contents of books as from the utterances of a living and abiding voice. End of quote. Here it is worthwhile to observe that he twice enumerates the name of John, the first he mentions in connection with Peter and James and Matthew and the rest of the apostles, evidently the meaning evidently meaning the evangelist, but the other John he mentions after an internal in class with other outside the number of the apostles, placing Ariston before him, and is distinctly calls him an elder. So that he hereby makes it quite evident that the statement is true who say that there were two persons of that name in Asia and that there are two tombs in Ephesus each of which even now is called the tomb of the important to notice this for it is probable that it was the second if one will not admit that it was the first revelation which is ascribed by name to John the pious of whom we are now speaking confesses that he had received the words of the apostle from those who had followed them but says that he himself he was himself a hearer of Ariston and the elder John. At all events, he mentions them frequently by name, but besides their records, their traditions in his writings, so much for these points, which I trust have not been usually adduced. It is worthwhile, however, to add to the words of Papias, given above other passages for him, in which he records some other wonderful events, likewise having come down to him by tradition, that Philip, the apostle, resided in Heraplas with his daughters has been already stated but how Papias the contemporary relates that he had heard a marvellous tale from the daughters of Philip must be noted here for he relates that in, a, in his time a man rose from the dead and again he gives other wonderful stories about Justus who was surnamed Barsabas how he drank a deadly poison yet by the grace of the Lord suffered no inconvenience of this Justus the book of Acts records that after the extension of the Saviour, the holy apostles put him forward with Matthias and prayed for the right choice in place of the traitor Judas that should make their number complete. This passage is somewhat as follows, and they put for, forward to Joseph called Basarbus, Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justus, and Matthias, and they prayed and said, and they quote, end of quote, the same writer has recorded other notices as having come down to him from oral tradition, certain strange parables of the Saviour and teaching of his, and other statements of rather mythical character, among which he says that there will be a period of some 10,000 years after the resurrection, and that the kingdom of Christ will be set up in a material form on this earth. These ideas, I suppose, he got through a misunderstanding of the apostolic accounts, not perceiving that the things recorded there in figures were spoken by them mystically. Let's see how much time I've got. For he evidently was a man of very mean capacity, as one may be judged from his own statements, yet it was owing to him that so many church fathers after him adopted a like opinion, urging their own support the antiquity of the man as for instance Irenaeus, however, else they were also declared that they held like views. Pius also gives his own work other accounts of the words of the Lord on the authority of Ariston, who has been mentioned above, the traditions of the elders John. To these we refer to the curious, and for our present purpose we will merely add to this words which have been quoted above, a tradition which has been set forth through these sources concerning Mark who wrote the Gospel. And the elder said this also Mark, having become the interpreter of Peter, wrote down accurately everything that he remembered without, however, recording in order what was either said or done by Christ. And neither did he hear the word, Lord, nor did he follow him, 
but afterwards, as I said, attended Peter, who adopted his instructions to the needs of his hearers, but had no desire of giving a connected account of the Lord's oracle. So then Mark made no mistake. While he thus wrote down some things as he remembered them, for he made it his one care not to omit anything that he heard or set down any false statement therein. Such then, end of quote, is the account given by Papias concerning Mark. But concerning Matthew, the following statement is made by him. So then Matthew composed the oracle in the Hebrew language, and each one interpreted them as he could. The same writer employed testimonies from the first epistle of John, and likewise from that of Peter. And he has related another story about a woman accused of many sins before the Lord, which the gospel according to the Hebrews contains. So what's the significance of uh, Papias? Well, the significance of Papias is that uh, he's very important in telling us about the gospel traditions, who, who wrote the gospels, um, etc. But Papias' uh, testimony was just dismissed by the foreign critics, the Boltman scholars. Um, and it, it was just dismissed. But now, Balkum is saying we need to take Papias seriously. Because he, he did want to look at eyewitness material as honestly and faithfully as he could. He might have made mistakes, collected stories that were, weren't true. But he collected, he tried to collect stories that were true based on this methodology. And if that's the case, we can look at what Papias says and find some historical kernel. Um, and for example, it, Papias verifies that the Gospels were very early on accepted throughout the ancient world um, as authoritative. So, taking Papias, if you noticed in the uh, reading, um, went to talk to Philip's daughters. You know, it was incumbent on him on him to find out about what the eyewitnesses were saying and to investigate. And he's using the same methodology as Greek historians. So that means when we're reading Papias or we're reading some of the early church writers, we have to take them more seriously in that they were trying to be faithful um, to what they believed uh, were the eyewitness material. Um, that doesn't mean to say we accept what they say uncritically. It doesn't mean to say that they, they didn't make mistakes. Papias um, probably made mistakes in his historical thinking and writing. Um, but what it does show is how the form critics and how the whole scholarly world can just dismiss Papias as irrelevant in the study of the Gospels and the importance of the Gospels about the life of Christ. And now another major scholar, Barkham, pushing back and saying, no, the trend has gone too far. Papias is actually very important in this discussion actually tells us some very important things and not only tells us some very important things his methodology is extremely important and that means we can find out things about the gospels and the value of the gospels the importance of the gospels the content of the gospels from papias's time we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this in more detail